Pro Stock second round ready to go now and it all kicks off with Greg Anderson and Jed Coughlin going head to head for the 80th time. And then the pairs to follow include Alan Johnson, Shane Gray, Jason Lyon against their opponents. Those three drivers picking their lanes. Once you go on board with Jed Coughlin, Jed, as we always mention, one of the best in the business on the starting line. He does have five red lights, so this season he has been struggling in that department. He is trying a lot of different things. Greg Anderson, you hear him always talk. I got to really get up on it. I got to be, be able to hit that tree and do the job. Now is the time to do it because both of these cars, when they've gone down the track this week, are about within about one hundredth of each other pretty much every pass when they hook it up. Two drivers that have raced each other the most in pro stock history. Greg Anderson has won 41 of the previous 79 matchups. This one being the 80th. Oh, oh Jackie has sideways. We have seen some problems today for sure in that right lane, not just in the mellow yellow side as Greg earns a very valuable 20 points. Now, well, Greg, Greg definitely needed it, but watch Jed Coughlin. That thing's going to make a right turn back. It washes out and spins around. But he's got the shoe release on the button on the steering wheel. Probably when he was yanking that wheel around, might have possibly hit that somehow. Or maybe the tire shake. He had a lot of tire shake there. Might have just shook the shoots right out of the back. Oh, look at you heard it on boards that engine was just oh, screaming yeah. as he's trying to pull the marks. gears. And I think it might have just shook the parachutes right out. Well, that thing was chattering when it left the starting line. But Greg Anderson keeps himself moving forward. Just win. Doesn't care how. Just has to keep going rounds. Well, sometimes the fickle finger of fate in drag racing can be so cruel by a thousandth of a second. Something. Opportunity obviously missed. Did anything specifically go wrong on that run? No, I put a hole out early. Just went through the clutch and put a hole out. And we seen Hagen go 22 there, and I knew mine was only going to go about an 18 or a 19 if it was if it stuck. So that's what I was trying to do. But it put a hole out and, and got through the clutch there early. But that's the way it goes. Old Gary did a better job than me. So hey, on to Brainerd. Still hanging on to 10th place by the skin of my teeth, but we're uh, we're gonna make a, a horse race out of this, no doubt about it. Thanks, Rattler, for the weekend. Appreciate the uh, sponsorship for the one one race, and uh, thank you, Dick Levi, for the whole year. Couldn't do it without you, bud. Thank you. Thank you. So the battle for 10th rages on there, as it does here in Pro Stock, where at the moment Greg does have himself in to that number 10 position. However, Jonathan Gray is still yet to come. Jonathan races his brother Shane. That's going to be a great matchup. Jonathan has pretty much owned him, at least on the reaction timer. Full shot wins a couple of times this year. Shane was number one. Right now, V gains his new and improved Dodge Dart as he's been going down the racetrack and making uh, some very good runs. Well, now giving us final instructions to go up there and do a good job against Jason Line. Jason line number one of the power rankings has already punched his ticket into the countdown of the championship. One in Pomona start the year and it's Sonoma seven days ago. Ooh, did he wiggle enough to give V games a chance to beat him? Close. It was close 657 nine Jason line takes a narrow six thousand for the second margin of victory. Pro stock has been awfully close and this this was another example six thousandths of a second the margin of victory at the stripe as Jason line advances to the semifinals. Oh Greg looking at that monitor to see how his teammate just squeaked out one over V gains. Meanwhile winning rounds Jake had some kind of a problem. How big is that 20 points for you and your camp. Well it's huge. It's absolutely huge. I haven't been able to get around that yellow car. Seems like all year it may be all year so. I feel great, Gary. I just uh, I felt so confident coming into Sunday here today. Now I just need to go out and finish the job. I've got a great horse. I've got a great chance to win the race, and that's what I want more than anything. I haven't won in over two years. I need a win to help me in the points, obviously, and uh, I can't think of a better way to sling me on into that 10th spot than win the race. Yeah, well, you've just gone into 10th by six points, but of course, Mr. Uh, Gray is going to be coming up here momentarily. A race win. That's what I want there. Race win. Yep. Alan Johnson, Dave Conley, a great matchup on the racetrack right now. Mentioned tricky conditions in the right lane. Well, we've seen them for sure. And in the right lane will be Dave Conley. Well, and Dave Conley is also in my power rankings, but so is Alan Johnson. I put Dave 
Dave doesn't necessarily have a, a great car coming into this event, but his driving makes up for a lot of it. Alan Johnson, on the other hand, had a very good car coming into this event, and he's got a great car up to this point. Like I said, he's been you know low ET of every round of qualifying. He was a second quick only to Shane Gray in the first round, so that Mopar's running strong. Dave Conley has raced Alan Johnson now at the last five races on the NHRA Tour with a three and one round record against him heading into this matchup. Think AJ knows that? Probably. He just knows he need needs to be up on the wheel. Pretty even on the starting line. Now who has the better car? Alan Johnson does. 6.56.9. the best run of this second round of eliminations in pro stock take a look at the finish line as uh Conley's already got the laundry out by about quarter car length Alan Johnson advances with lane choice over Greg Anderson by two thousandths of a second let me tell you what else is at stake today for Alan Johnson he is eating up Erica Ender Stevens points lead now trailing her by just two rounds a few moments ago I mentioned the right lane tricky conditions well, in the right lane where Jack Beckman had that huge explosion. You ride on board with Jack. Wow, unbelievable what that ride was like. John Kernan will have more on this in just a moment, but let's get you set up now for Shane Gray taking on his younger brother, Jonathan Gray. Jonathan, who's simply been scintillating off the starting line. Yeah, he doesn't have that national event win that Richie Crampton does in the rookie battle but based solely on his driving alone, this kid is more than worth it. Well, as you take a look at the points in that battle for the top 10, Jonathan Gray obviously needs this round win. And as you mentioned, the fact that he has been scintillating, did I say that right? Scintillating, you that know it. too, on the tree. Well, Shane Gray in the other lane has been just as good on the racetrack. He's had a very good race car this weekend, second only to Alan Johnson, and I say barely second. He's been running pretty close to Allen all weekend. He was actually a little quicker in the first round. Dead even. Yep. 045s each. Change and walk. By a nose. 657-4. Shane Gray for the first time ever racing his brother has earned a round win. Shane probably needed that one for the old psyche. John Curtin. Well, we saw the explosion that Jack Beckman went through not too long ago. They're still diagnosing the problem to figure out what exactly happened. But let me show you the end result. This is the head off the left side of the engine. This is where the intake manifold or the intake valves are. All three of those, three out of the four intakes are broken. And then move over to the intake manifold, and you'll see that the explosion was powerful enough. Even at, in knocking out the burst plates, it also knocked off the front of the intake manifold. That's some crazy damage there. For sure, thanks for bringing us that, John. Well, the semifinals and pro stocks shape up like this. Alan Johnson with lane choice when he takes on Greg Anderson, who is now firmly in the top 10, looking to add points and distance himself from Jonathan Gray, who just lost to his brother Shane. Shane with lane choice in the other semifinal against Jason Lyon. With Alan Johnson now, as you advance into the semifinals, how closely are you following this points deal as you're sneaking up on Erica Andrew Stevens? Oh, you know, we pay a little bit of attention to it, but we still got two races when we get back, and that team she's on there is a pretty, pretty good team, so uh, can't take it for granted just because we leave here with it. But we're trying, Erica. Right. He wins to this event. He has the points lead. 